ठीक है बट सैटरडे ओके एनी क्वेश्चन Hey, good morning. Hey, good morning. He's all alone today. Huh? Arnav Paul, good morning. And he's muted. Any questions? Nothing. Yeah, I mean, all of them. This is the the But there's a practical reason why I ask you to come forward. I can't hear. Eigen value? So this eigen value is half of it. We already know that this is the equal to the one value. But in Hartree Park theory, yes. Yeah, yeah. But what does this uh, orbital pi represent? In Hartree Park theory or Hartree Park theory? In Hartree Park theory, So let's start. How did we start in Hartree Park theory? In Hartree Park theory, we start with an approximate wave function. We said we have an approximate wave function. So you take these orbitals, make a wave function. That's an approximate wave function. There's no other meaning. So phi is each phi by itself. Can you say it's an orbital? It's an approximate orbital. It's the best mean mean orbit because you are basically doing a wave function based. Theory. These are components of a wave function. Is that is that keep that in mind? Anything else? No other question. You can you know have a discussion. Any other question? Okay. So let's let's just begin. With uh, what I have done, I have written minus one half the square plus the external plus the part three half plus the change correlation half. Why I equals one half. Right, and this is what we said is the Ohm-Sham equation. <laughs> and here, I answer your question in Ohm-Sham term. We are after the density, right? So here, phi is at no mean, except that. They give density. Whereas in Hartree Park theory, they were part of a wave function. The two approaches philosophically are different. In Hartree Park theory, I'm looking for an approximate wave function. In Ohm-Sham theory, I'm looking for those orbitals. That will give me the same distance, right? Similarly, I can write the kinetic energy. Till now, the kinetic energy non-interacting. Why is it non-interacting? Because now I'm talking about a non-interacting system, right? So this is going to be summation i, fi, fi i minus half. Why I? Right? This will give me the non-interacting kinetic energy. But today I'm going to give you proofs that how I'll show you. Okay. 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 
there was a good question from somebody. He asked, what do, why is the present in heart block theory and here? So, heart block theory will make wave functions, so they are part of wave function here, they just need to be something like this. Now, this is TS, right? And Let's look at some exact properties. So if I knew these things exactly, they'll give me this, they'll give me this. What will be cone sham wave function if you like? So I cone sham, although it has no meaning, but if you like, you can try it as a, you know, some sort of a wave function, right? <coughs> will be <coughs> exactly equal to square root of n factorial. Let's leave it. But it's a cone sham wave function, it's not a wave function. But you know, we are all in approximate business. Sometimes you may feel that okay, you know, I'll treat it as an approximate wave. But you can do one more thing. Let's see how. These are things which are research level, so you may want to try when you're doing this. One is straight away do a cone sham calculation. That is fine. Now you see when I'm solving this, remember I have told you that E gap. And artery fork will be much, much, much larger than E gap group. So this is this fellow is doing N plus one electron system. Now suppose I could solve cone sham system. Each potential is a local potential. So if I were to plot, let's say V cone sham R, right? It'll be some external potential. Let's do it. Maybe some some external potential, right? So let's just this, but this, maybe this is extra bound system. Artery potential, I'm making it so that you realize what we do. Artery potential is going to be positive. Alright. <coughs> We're assuming everything goes to zero far away. So far away, that's my reference point. And I would have Say the, the exchange correlation potential on the structure. Okay? The exchange correlation. Okay? And you add the three and you get the true potential. Let's see. Quite deep out here. So let's see. This is being one channel. You know, they're not to scale, so goes up. And then maybe have it there. I mean, it's schematic, right? It's schematic, it's schematic. <coughs> now, the real question Why did I not do this in Hartley Pop here? Here, Hartley here. Yeah. Showing your potential is very excited. Is it because I do DFT? is not very excited about it? Or is there some other reason? You want the right to speak here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what is that? I'm not going to kill you or something. And when I speak, I don't even know. The kids are not coming out of my mouth. Yeah, please. What is this? Now, that doesn't mean that you don't ask questions, okay? I'm not going to ask another thing probably. Either you speak loud or you move forward. I also developed a code. Your yeah, character gave me a code. So I'm really part of the area. Yeah. So in DFT, you are getting the unique grounds. Yes. But in Hartley Fock, you can't get no, you do, you do, you do minimize, right? So you are getting a ground state. But corresponding to some specific density, yes. you are getting the. I'm, I'm not, I'm producing an approximate wave function. I would have plotted approximate uh, potential. Right? Each one of you has to respond to this. So in Hardy or Hardy for theory, we use that self interacting term. Here it is not present. Right? Not that. Why did I that potential is treated in an average way? Where? In Hardy for theory. I would have plotted the average potential. What does that matter? Go back to Hardy for Go for Hardy for you are taking more. So, 
These questions are very simple. You're getting out on a very straight ball. It's not even dipping. No more meaning. Just the dipping ball is a lot. It's not going to be falling in the news. I plot it. Do you think I could have plotted B external there? Yes or no? It's not really wrong. It's not really. B external doesn't change. Could I have plotted B heart rate? Yes or no? Why didn't I plot B and C? Why don't you plot Vs approximately? Vs, or it's going to be Vs, the shape for it. Try plotting it for something, some schematically. How would you plot it? What does V is depend on? Hmm? What is the argument inside V is? Huh? So I spent some time on this. I kept asking you because this is one advantage. Whole chant theory is giving you. It's giving you exact density, but you're doing a local potential. Artery fog, just for comparison, would have been if I would look at artery fog. Okay, it would be minus one half. Very square, that's fine. Plus V external R plus V artery R this part is fine. I could have write written by I plus integral Vx R R prime by I R prime V R prime equals small R. How do I plot this? Right? I don't know. And in heart rate theory, now you should answer heart rate theory by the way. In heart rate theory, If you give me the answer, I'll tell you a nice term of my chart. It's not there. No, but there's, there, there is a potential. There is a self interaction direction potential. That is orbital dependent. If I'm talking about n electrons, I'll have to plot n of them. I can't plot a one, only one. Here it is one for three. See the kind of simplicity we have made. Now, this is connected to, if you go and see how problems are solved, how they scale with number of electrons n, right? Now you see n square behavior, that behavior, here, whatever n is. Because you only one potential, every electron is moving in that. So if I had 20 electrons, I would plot 20 potential. Again, the philosophy is different, but in the end, that gives you an approximate wave function. This gives me the exact answer. In principle, RT and RT power theory are not even exact in principle. 
have to move beyond. The other thing that happens here is, so suppose these are the ground state levels. <coughs> these are all occupied. Okay. Looks not for me. But the local potential is like any other problem. I can calculate out of what you are this. Although they have no meaning, but it does what I can. I can use these orbitals to expand my wave function. These also, since I am in a local potential, they form a complete set. I can write my psi exact as summation of psi slitter determinants made from ps of Right? It was what I have a set. So I think this is a, I'm getting a complete set. Although up to this point it gives me all the exact answers, but if I want to go to wave function, I can use that. Why not? Does that make sense or not? Right? And they are easier to solve. Here, even these orbitals are only an electron problem, unlike Hartree Fock, where this was an n plus one electron. Right? So these gaps would be better. I'll comment on that. We are still solving an area of problem. Although they have no meaning. Is that point clear? Making all these subtle points. They're very important. Okay? So I can, nobody stops me. In some local potential, I generate different number of orbitals that expand my wave function. I can always do that. Then I can I can minimize the Hamiltonians. That as long as I have a complete set, I'm okay. And these would be corresponding to the problem in some some manner or the other because we external the same. This will make a very good <coughs> set. Except that even if you do approximate KS, that itself gives such good answers, not many people do that. Okay, but it's a possibility. Uh, anything else? Uh, I'm missing now. Other thing I had said for phone chat. By construction. Mu phone chat is equal to mu to system. Right? And this is a non-interacting system. Phone chat is a non-interacting system. So what will mu be? Remove the energy from the uppermost level. Right? So, epsilon i equals epsilon max on sham is equal to mu to system. And this we had already said for an n electron system, this is minus i. So, epsilon max and cone sham would give you minus i. Any other orbital, I can write it has no other no meaning. Okay. All right. So this is as far as cone sham is concerned. Now it is solved with some approximations, which I'll come to later. But I still want to do some exact theorems and so that you know the issue. Are there any questions so far? Any questions from uh, Arna Paul? Yes. No, sir. Okay. Thanks. Any questions from here? I'm making a lot of starting points, that's why I'm going slow and I'm asking questions. I don't have a question. Okay. We did this. Oh, I owe you a theorem, right? Now we did this. By the end, I finished my lecture. There'll be a spot here. Then I have another white shirt. The day I wear that, I'll always call. So those are the theorems. Maybe the day you wear white, something like that happens. But I'm being very careful. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to go into some uh, Oh, before that, I should also say P 
let's see that property. So it's just behavior. So in a finite system, we go to a large distance. Pxc r tending to infinity goes as minus one over r. For a semi-infinite system, like a metallic surface or distance z vxc z into infinity goes as minus one over four z. That's the unit potential. Okay. I'll argue this, but you can prove it exactly. If you take an electron system, potential is P external plus P hard tree plus Pxc. If you take an N minus 1 electron system, P external remains the same, and that N minus 1 electron is right here. This is the last N electron. Now, when it is far away from the system, I can treat it as indistinguishable from the rest. Potential that this will give rise to would be P external plus V hard due to N minus 1 particles. Right? So that's exactly one charge difference. So I can either think of it this way, or here I can say P one sham would be in this limit P external plus V hard tree N minus 1. Right? So that's my answer. Here, the same argument can be given because if you go to large distance, again I can treat this P external, whatever it is, plus be hard three and minus one. So individual particle electron out there C is now minus one. So I'm mixing two pictures. One I'm thinking of this whole thing as n particle system, the other I'm thinking as one particle far away, distinguishable one charge, and the rest can match. Okay, but you can give formal proof. Those of you who want the paper by one bar. It's a nice proof. Now remember one more thing. I had said that in Hartley theory. Change correlate a change energy can be written as minus one half integral rho x r r prime rho r over r minus r prime dr dr prime right I had argued that I had shown it and similarly I said that if you go to the two system I can write this as integral Rho x c r r prime rho r over r minus r prime dr dr prime right now the whole in exchange now remember efc dft this is all dft efc dft is different from exc or chemical. What was the difference? Remember from yesterday, what was the difference? The TC, right? So they're different. Does it mean I can write the quantum chemical whole and this whole from the same? No. This whole is slightly different. Okay? Alright. Now, once I write it like this, so this fellow is creating a Coulomb potential and then it's interacting with the rest of the density. Right? This fellow is creating a Coulomb potential. So this is like a charge and it's interacting with the rest of the density. Can I write Vx or Vxc in terms of the whole area? Can I do that? You have a suggestion? 
Anything is right in front of you. That's all the rest of the problem. Yes. One minus. Hmm? One minus. One minus. One minus. In either part of them. This one. One. Why? Why one minus? Okay, so that's that's no electron is given by this. You don't need one minus. You need this. You mean that? Yes or no? Or you mean something else? Now, this is where you, you have to start thinking, you see, what was E hard thing? So, 1 minus integration rho or d or z for 3. Okay, got it. Just let me finish. So, hard thing was this. Yeah. Right? What was V hard thing? Is VRT? Is the Coulomb potential of rho r? Isn't it? Yes or no? Can you make an analysis? If I could write exchange potential like this, can you make an analogy? <clears throat> so, sir, Samne, eh? Oh. Suggest V is right in front of you. V H is given inside V H. Hmm? If you read, come in. They're not showing the answer. Yeah, they're not cold. They're strong. But the V H is the integration of a row R prime comma R. This R is also V. R prime is the volume of here in the exchange, we have both the parameters, R and R. Huh? Here in the exchange, we have both the parameters, R and R. There also the R and R, the heart rate. Heart rate in the denominator. Yes, yes. Can you just guess? I mean, the science is all about guessing. Science is not commenting and rolling back. <laughs> have you heard of Rahim? Ansama, he was a poet in the first four. Have you heard of him? Huh? Anyway, he had a point. Double. That's in Hindi, so I'll read it in the class later. You know that in Bahia, they have a funny pair. If you take a punch, they only punch. Take a punch. And the second line is my proper hold in the room. So I can hold my house sitting on the side. I didn't find anything. Take a punch. You're all making comments because you don't want to take a punch. Yes. That's how science is done. I said to a plant, when he gave the photon concept. You have to be there. I want to write for you. I don't want to swing the house. There's no commentary. I want a shot. Come on, drive. Play, come on, drive. Cover drive is equal power, huh? They are locked at cover drive. Maybe there's a chance of getting out, but you can't. You get a score. You score a four runs. <coughs> that is the integration of no one. Integration of? Integration of no one. That is by one of R minus 5. Right? Okay. 
You mean the one right here? No, no, no. D. Only only R. So what do you mean to the R? This is my volume deal, yeah. Only D R. Yeah. Okay. This will be a function of R prime. Problem over here. So, first plan is linear in here. Here is the second plan. I'm not going to write it. If I write it, I'll say, oh, I was thinking like that. I don't want to say that. So, this is, this is a, like, this is like B hard tree at R prime. Obviously wrong, right? Manifestly wrong. We are going to erase this. I just saw my phone. I also need rest for my phone. Sometimes the overthinking kills you. Actually, you're not thinking. You know what you're thinking? What if I say something wrong? That's what you're thinking. You're not thinking the thing. Row S? D. R and R prime. Degration over R prime. Only R prime. But if you do it over both, you get hit. Then start a function of R. So, what was wrong in saying that all you did is remove the R form? What took you so long? I, I'm sure I mean, 90% of you are thinking, I'm thinking of that, right? Okay. Now somebody says, what did I say? You have to, this is what it is. This is why known as a slater potential. Okay. Ah, uh, but why is this not true? This is not correct. Otherwise, there will be no problem, right? And rho s, by the way, in Hartree Fock case also, rho s, since uh, in one channel, so I have those orbitals, I can make rho s from those orbitals. Okay? That is not a problem. The problem is this. So, how can Slater do it? Let's change colors. I think I'll tell you, Slater, they should have a like red color, a lot of colors there, that'll be fine. Only two colors. So uh, let's see. It's later. <laughs> I'm going over, over these. These are watershed moments in development of the theory. Not, not just DFT. This watershed moment in development. Many body theory. Slater did this in the context of Hartree Fock. So what did Slater say? Slater say that the exchange part is what? Y, I, Star I J R I R R prime Y J R prime over R minus R prime D R prime. That is the exchange potential exchange potential acting on phi R. That's what it was. We got the party popular. Right? You go back. That's what it is. You don't have to take it. And there's a minus sign. What if I want to write this as a, you know, something like a local operator? Then what would I do? I write this like this. Let me forcefully do this. Y i or y j star r y i r prime y j r prime is also star divided by Y I R. I'm just writing it symbolically. R prime. D e R prime. Finally, R. Okay. 
Is that okay? All I did is divided by and multiplied by pi i r. But this, this, this animal here looks like a local potential, except that it depends on i, right? I can think of the exchange potential as I can think of the exchange potential as an orbital pendant potential which is minus integral <coughs> by oh, there is a summation over here also. I'm pretty sure I predicted by j r y i r prime over y i r or r minus r prime dr prime. Is that okay? Then it multiplies. So either you have a non-local potential or you have an orbital dependent exchange potential. It is one the same. Now this I can write as pro exchange r r prime depends on i divided by r minus r prime dr prime where rho exchange i is equal to summation by j star r prime by j r y i r prime over y i r. That is like the orbital dependent Fermi pole. Okay, what Slater said, what Slater said was that look, all these Fermi holes cannot be very different. You did not take it, but he said that different rho xi cannot be very different. He was trying to simplify it, right? So, RT form theory has this potential. So Snedra said that different rho x i couldn't be different, couldn't be much different. And therefore, I may as well apply an average rho x r r prime, which will be probability of occupation of i f orbital at r times rho x i. R R prime summed over i divided by summation over i pi i r yes. average probability. This is a factor of two and all that. Now this you do. This is rho r, right? This is exactly the problem. Then he said. I'm calculating Vxi through the orbital dependent for me mode. I may as well apply that with the potential from this. Orbital independent for me mode. Be done with it. That's what you write. And then he said. Apply an approximation for this, which is based on the homogeneous electron test that we have already done. All right? So we do <coughs> HEG approximation, and this comes out to be minus PK R4. And he said, apply this. This so would be DFT. It's trying to simplify our tree for theory. Where KFR <coughs> is nothing but P pi square over that 
place to be. Set that on local integration. So this is what I call in the modern language local density. Yes. In the initial, what do we have in the hard trick of the potential in it? The extent of the energy depends on R and R. Right? It's not a no, 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 no. Energy is around the Okay. The exchange potential in it. It's dependent only on R and R prime. Non local. Yeah. Non local. And DFT depends on R. That's why we have the preference over DFT yes. and solve the downstream energy. But if we can write down the exchange energy, energy in terms of R, then the potential in terms of R. Potential means the potential energy of the yeah. That means we have a, like similar techniques we also do here. Except yeah, this one, right? Why? Yeah. 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 You want me to answer right away? And I ask you, she is you know, scratching her nose, she is doing like this, you know, blah, blah. Uh, so you see what we said earlier, time to derive the reverse. And then, this also you see, even today people use it, although with DFE test, there was latest XR format. So he said, you know, instead of the 3 by 2, let's write this as minus R for KF over point. <coughs> alpha becomes a parameter, calculate the energy, and then vary parameter until it Okay. This is the context of hot report. Since you ask, I'll go over this. Number one, it will be wildly different. Can you tell me a singular a point where this thing go up? Wherever pi i r goes to zero. And given an orbital, because we are talking about fermion system, we are not just feeling lowest orbital, we are feeling upper orbitals also. Right? So, a lowest orbital doesn't have a node, upper one needs to do. For example, suppose I take, just for the hypothesis, I take the simplest two orbitals from the here. I have 1s, 2, 2s. 1s is fine, nodeless, right? 2s is this. This potential will go to infinity here. The <clears throat> Exchange hold for 1s orbital be very nice. Exchange hold for the second orbital would go up. No, no, before let me finish. Okay. So the argument that they couldn't be much different is actually crazy. Now, the Hartley fork, we are not assuming the orbital. The advantage of the orbital we have in the DU. No, no, no. That's why we. That wait, 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 wait. First thing I said in Hartley fork is the best mean green theory. So wouldn't there be orbitals? There may be orbitals. Not there, maybe. Okay, there are the whole Hartley Park theory, and then you're saying maybe. There are orbitals so there. Yes. Yes. That these like in and in minus one, that these are but it's coming, there is no orbital. So there are orbitals here in Hartley Park. Hartley Park theory is made of orbitals. If there are orbitals, so there's not there. yet. There are orbitals. There are orbitals. There are orbitals, and we can take for the n number of electrons, we have taken the orbitals of and orbitals there. More than let me say if you we are break up, you know, bigger by this If we can take, then we can also get give the gap, the gap values. And it should be accurate. <laughs> I showed Rosen Ramani doesn't work. I showed you the N plus one minus N problem. In the, there we have assumed the ground state is the only have the in electrons, and therefore the A minus electron those those are the ground state the variation from the variation principle. That's why we are getting give like higher energy. Here we are assuming the outbreak. What is there and what is there? Here, there are the L. Here, the what? Which is here means in the Hartley form. Yes. Having an electron. Yes. And the SVB orbitals as a bit. Uh, no, what, what gives you right of taking Hartley form orbitals and say they give you the accurate density? What gives you the right to say that those orbitals are giving me accurate density? Only thing I'm calculating in Hartley form. Approximate wave function built out of single point. 
everything is approximate. Whatever density I get there would be because I take finally the expectation value of the density operator with respect to the Hartley Coffee function comes out to be something over by R square. That is fine, but by construction, it's going to be an approximate. Because the wave function is a Initially, when we have the Koopman's theory, the Koopman, we have mixed too many things. The Koopman, we have to go to the Pania glass, we have to go to the Pania glass, we have to go to the Pania glass. Maybe because the sharp, like in the band gap part, there is some confusion in the way. The band gap is coming due to there are total A number of electrons are there. The right is theta determinant, those are the ground state. And for A minus 1, we don't go into the band gap. N and N plus 1, okay, N plus 1. For the N plus 1, we are not going to get the ground state. The reason is that the wave function is of... No, 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 wait, wait, I'll correct you. Sir. What I showed is that if you are even calculating as virtual N plus 1 at the state, it is equivalent to getting that orbital for N plus 1 electron system. Yes. So for N plus 1 electron system, that is necessarily going to be higher. Now, in our case, we don't need to include the inverse one part. But in basis, so whether you do a calculation through basis or whether you do a numerical calculation by solving over a mesh, answer would be the same. Theory is the same. But there is like taking the inverse one electron, getting the ground state, and having the like for the any electron having presence of a like. No, no, wait, wait, you're confusing too many things now. So let's let's write everything that you're saying, right? Okay. You say we are doing R3 fog, right? R3 fog. So there is n electrons, right? And you are saying there's n plus one electrons, right? Yes. And then you are saying that n electrons plus n plus one virtual orbital. For the second case, I am assuming the n plus 1 is my virtual orbital and solve the like the equation. Like the we are solving an electron problem with n plus 1 basis set. This is it. And then easily I can calculate the band gap. Yes. And there is no approximation is taken here like the. Yeah. So now what you are saying, saying is, no, no, then you are making a very dangerous statement. You are saying solving a problem through basis set or through an exact numerical integration of the equation give me different answers. Can that be correct? Can't, but I don't think link them. No, because it's the same method. Whether you do it through basis set or whether you so do it by numerically integrating the equation, the answer would not be different. Otherwise, the method would not work. That's one part. Like the first case, in plus one electron, no, 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 wait, wait. Confused control I'm going off. Am I solving this problem? First we need to solve the this problem. This problem. So solve. Solve. We have solve. A so we have no wait. And orbitals. And all are occupied. Yes. Okay. We have the ground state in active value. And for the second case, we also solve the problem. Okay, second but case. Solve the problem. In plus one. There is a basic difference in the wave function. Yes. Basic difference in the wave function. Yes. But the third case, we are taking one wave function and solving the problem. Yeah. So third case, you are doing this. And this is n plus 1. Right? And a, yes. And the wave function is not similar with the above. What do you mean wave function is similar to the above? Two? Is this similar. is the same as this. Yes, this is the same as this. And after having done this, after having obtained your orbitals, I am solving for this. Yeah. I'm solving for this, right? After so I do this first and then I say okay. Then do this. Right. Now now for the band gap calculation from the second part. No no band gap, I'll do this. This is the band gap. This is the band gap. Then we don't have to like include the variation principle to calculate the band gap. So we are just taking the orbital orbital difference. For the second case, we have to include the variation principle. Okay, so you are saying you do a down state of n plus 1. Yes. What would be the answer? Yes. Right? It wouldn't be very different because 
it will take manga prices and what? Manga usually rises in the large system. That is twenty three right? But we having a we have to let me let me finish. If I take the n plus 20 the problem, on to two heartbeat box. And other thing is, when I add one extra electron and n plus, that is the same. Okay. Right? So you say, I may as well add this may be wrong. Yes, it's wrong. Usually what would you say if I have 10 days to 23 electrons, I add one more electron, I may as well calculate the of stop. Right? Even if you do this, so suppose I had this. So this would be like I have the valence band, right? And I have a conduction band, right? And I'm calculating this. In this case, what you say, I have calculated the valence band and I am putting one electron here and doing the calculation. You don't expect much difference in this in a large system. It doesn't make a difference. Is that what your confusion was? In, in a huge system, I add one more. So that's why I may as well straight away go for the difference in the virtual values of the virtual orbitals. Because if I put that extra electron, how much is the RT potential change? 1 over n. Right? A change would be with this, but the orbitals wouldn't change much. That's the answer. I hope that answers your question. Right? Okay. That's why maybe picture of help. I understand your question. You also, now this is clear to you? No. Anything else? So the important point he is making because I will come back to this in one channel again. Okay. So we come back to this. Alright. So this was the X alpha method. Now I said why this cannot be correct. Therefore minus 3 kf of y is not correct. Now let me say what is correct. What is correct is let us make NDA. NDA local density approximation I have already said, for whom sham? What was the energy in cone sham? E exchange in local density approximation is equal to 3 kf over 4 pi comes out to the exchange energy per particle, flow raised to r, pr is also a function of r, which is nothing but minus 3 over 4 pi, 3 pi square raised to 1 third, integration rho raised to 4 thirds, r, uh, pr. Okay? And you take this functional derivative. So here, in cone sham, the exchange, I'm glad now I can just go over here. Exr, LDA would be delta ex over delta rho. Right? You do that. I do the functional derivative trick, derivative of this, four thirds will come out, then cancel it four thirds. It comes out to be minus one over pi p pi square rho raised to one third, which is minus kfr over pi. That is the local density, correct local density approximation potential in the properly derived mathematical. This is off by a factor of 3 by 2. By the time Slater proposed, his theory had also come, so that's when he came on this next alpha. No, in fact, he had this 3 over 2. This alpha always came out to be close to 2. <coughs> so there was, uh, those of you, I mean, you must be reading papers, a large number of papers from Florida came with on electronic structure, there was a lovely group and all that. And they were followers of Plato. They did X alpha and other short alphas close to Okay? That's the genesis. Now, exact, I mean, this should not call it correct local density approximation of the genesis. Any question? 
was bang rule idea later what it came so I did it. All right. Any questions? Now this we are into idea, I may as well do that. So this you understand why this is not correct. And consequently, what happens when you since it depends on R and R prime both, right? If you move R around, the exchange correlation both changes. I'll take you back to Griffin. Are you all from physics background? Hmm? You go back to Griffiths when you calculate electrostatic potential of something. Assume the rest of the charges are fixed. S charge does not change the rest of the charges. Here, as you move the next charge around, the rest of the charges are changing. Just like if you take the image potential, right? If you take the image potential, if you take a metal and a charge in front, if you just calculate the induced charge, the potential from the induced charge, if you calculate by rho induced, divided by r minus r prime, comes out to the minus one over two. Calculate the electric field due to this charge, rho induced, r prime over r minus r prime cube, r minus r prime v r prime, and then calculate the potential as the work done. <coughs> then it comes out to the minus one. <coughs> so, if the induced charge is changing with the test charge, right, then you have to do the second part. Okay? So, this is the correct way of calculating. This is Slater. This is correct. But this is an insight. Okay? And the whole thing, and then this was posed and then proved. By Bolas and March. Okay, and this whole thing, now you can think of calculating cone champ potential through from the wave function, from wave function you make both, and then you do this. This is known as uh, quantum. Right? So there's a taking a wave function, you can do all of this. This may not be directly useful for calculations. This gives it gives you an exact description of calculating the exchange condition given an antibody system, given an antibody wave function. And study do a lot of study on the exchange condition. That itself gives you right? Okay, so while it's still on the topic of Kohn Sham, I'll now go a little mathematical. Okay, so mathematical insights. They're important because it's a very <clears throat> different theory. So. First, remember yesterday we said that given a ground state density, this has a map of psi zero. Or this also has a map of the they are all one and the same. And when you write the energy, E is equal to psi 
plus P I plus integration P external R to R P R which we wrote as a universal function of rho plus integration P external R to R right and we said this is a universal independent of the external potential right so R to be established as map. How do I show it's independent? Even a row I can get a row. That's the idea of the universal, right? The universal. Okay. How do I show directly? So formulation is done by maybe okay, and the other person was here. Mathematical this is one of things. But I mean that should not be labeled like that. They're really themselves are universal value. Okay. So now you see when you say this E, how do I determine E ground state? I say minimum of psi psi E plus V E E plus psi the external psi this is what I minimize with respect to psi. Right? This is what we're doing. This is the variation principle. Now suppose pro R is fixed. I keep rho fixed. This is a row. How do I minimize that? Then I'll say E0 would be equal to search only over those size that give you this row. Right? I'm giving rho fixed. I'm constraining myself and minimize psi e plus v e psi plus rho is given so v external r to r. Now I'm given a row corresponding to v external, this is the home row. So look at this. Even when I vary psi, this is fixed. Because I'm constraining this one. Right? This is. So I, I'm given a density. Right? Given a density, and there's some external motion for which it is there. Then I'll do this minimization. Just by that. F rho is minimum of psi P plus V E psi only those psi that give you the known as constraint search. I'm doing a search over those wave functions that give me a particular density. Is that clear? They give you a function. How do I have? So suppose I'm given the most powerful computer in the world, which is search over everything, and I'm given a density. Then the corresponding F row would be push the button, say search all over the functions. And only over those that give me that particular density, which I have known. I've known those. 
I know those densities, and whichever gives me minimum of the expectation is that. Because it doesn't depend on the external. Given the row, I'm finding that control direct. Right? So I'm assuming I'm given a row corresponding to some V external which is fixed, right? This part would be fixed. So now this is a direct map. On row, that row. No VS one is coming in between. The reversal doesn't depend on the system. The row you have to guess. Yeah, I mean something you have to start is something. Guess row. No, no, not guess. I'm formulating now. I'm telling you, given a row, exact, row. given an exact row from somewhere, I can tell you what the function is, what the universal function. Find out the exact. No, find out what the I'm formulating. What is what is the meaning of a row? Can I show it's universal? I'm giving you a definition given a row. So earlier what we have said cone chat or home by cone, row and v external are equivalent. If you are given v external, I know the prescription very well of doing any calculation. Given a v external, I'll formulate, I'll make the Hamiltonian solve my equation. What is the equivalent if you are given a row? Be external. This is the way to do it. And it has not only given you that, it has also given you the wave function. <coughs> that is for given row. I've established a map from row to side. Is that okay? So in one case, so let's just compare since you asked. In one case, we were said, so short here. It says V external specifies the system at N. N is given, we'll assume it is one. Gives me the Hamiltonian, right? And then you say H psi equals E psi. Yes, sorry, memory wave function, right? Now let's say one more cone. This is given. Given row R. We said row R and the HTML are equivalent. That's what we proved, right? How do I do this? So I say, Search for psi only over those psi that give me rho e plus v. You found psi. Once you know psi, right? I can also find v external now. V external is equal to e operator i over psi, right? Minus v e. Just that we have developed a lot and lot and lot of schemes to do the first part in order to solve the Schrodinger equation in some way or the other. The second part is formalism. It has been done in certain ways. Try to do it. All right. So, since we said these two are equivalent, so rho also gives me the same information. Once I found V external, I can write E equals this minimum has given me F rho plus duration I found V external, V external R okay. Known as various constraint search. <coughs> I'm doing a lot of quantum mechanics. I mean, it is, it is quantum mechanics. Now I've come to the end. 
But before that, I want to do something. I wanted to show if I take the energy right of some potential lambda V external one plus one minus lambda V external two. What is this relationship with lambda e v external one plus one minus lambda e v external? And this will be either. So what we want to show is whether e is convex or concave as I vary v external suppose on I axis, I plot the external here and e here. Does it go like this or does it go? Like or try to also. We also have some fun. And then there is something very interesting. Very interesting. So you see, most of you, are, I assume, are doing the computational material science. Right? Is that correct? Yeah? That's the background. Oh, sorry. <coughs> this becomes stronger, computer gets better. So I, I, I have a potential, for example, right? Then you learn magic. I have say, you know, one potential like this. Let's say this is the external one. Another potential, maybe somewhere else, you know, two lips. The external two. And then I make a third potential, I take lambda. The external one plus one minus lambda the external two. So this will be something like you know one bit here, then bit here, and then bit here. Right? I solve for the <coughs> energy here, energy here, lambda is between <coughs> one and zero. Arnav, how are you doing? Yes, sir. No, no. I said, how are you doing? And he said, yes, sir. How are you? Fine. The sound clean. Maybe eyes are tired looking at the screen? Sorry? Said, maybe eyes are tired looking at the screen? Uh, uh, no, little bit. Fine, sir. You can, you can make out. Yeah. Thanks, thanks for being honest. Yeah, virtually, virtual orbital and plus one. <laughs> 
Since I've given the problem, I What is the coordinate today? Black, black, and then very visible from there. Yes. Can you repeat the question again? Because I want to confirm the question. Given two external potentials, yes. make a linear combination. Yes, sir. And you calculate the energy. Yes. How would that related to the energy of each? Okay. These are important because these are known as convexity or concavity of so you can minimize and maximize. For minimization, you need convexity. Okay. Oh, there's a problem from nature. I want to do. Since you all had cake, everybody had cake. Huh? Hey, so pizza jale hai. You cannot do that. The opening bad. You certainly can't say I'll bad. Sorry, I didn't do that. Huh? Sorry, I'm uncomfortable with it. <laughs> but you make me feel uncomfortable. You make me feel uncomfortable there. <laughs> You want me to be comfortable? I'm your guest. <laughs> so here's the problem which came in nature. Early 1900s. Okay? And remember that time phrase you were at the So there's some very crummy kind of phrase. So the problem was this. Usually if you have a cake, right? You have a cake. So you cut a slice. Right? The rest you put back in the refrigerator. So the problem was, how do you cut it so that, and then we put it back in the refrigerator so this guy is gone. This is a nature paper, by the way. Huh? So he said, I've discovered this and all that, and they published in nature. Then you can, then I tried it at home, which not just cake, sabzi of zisebi. You know, so now these, these two surfaces are exposed and they become dry. And then you don't want to eat it. Then you just take the slice off. So how do you cut your cake so that it doesn't, you know, the minimum exposure? The nature paper. <laughs> Hello? So this is also another problem. I just leave it for you. I know the answer. On the middle. Huh? Huh? On the middle, take a slide. Take a slide, yeah. That's what you do. So <clears throat> you cut it like this, and then put them back together. Minimum exposure. This came in nature. And you know what I tried at home? I'll tell you what. Because there is one particular vegetable they don't like much, but it's cooked. It's called Loki. Yeah? Everybody hates it. Everybody <laughs> eats it. So you want minimum piece from it and that's true. So you take a Loki and you want half of it should be cooked. So you cut it from here. And rest you put like this. So it doesn't get dried. So you can try it and everything. Anyway, so that I have cutting. This was in nature. If you try cutting cake nature, you get that. That's really fun. So you can say you solved a bigger problem. <laughs> Yeah, nature sometimes for this is maybe issues are 1900s, probably for people. No, no, it is the same thing. So, how the boil, yeah, how the mix. No, no, sometimes how the like, uh, dynamics of the boil, I mean, when you boil the eggs, how the dynamics
So nature used to be science magazine. So this is right. We still believe in publishing the popular things. You have a problem of this. You apply the variation principle. I've given you a hint also. See, you should see something. I'm not even looking at you. So that you don't. I really wanted somebody to take notes because a lot of this stuff is research oriented. So, you know, it's not. But some is my own research. So assume P external one, the, the potential on the left, right? Where you're mixing two potentials gives you a wave function psi. Then apply the variation. <laughs> You are not using the column. Huh? Column. Oh, column mic. I thought you were saying call me, and I said, why she's saying call me? So you're saying that I'll assume that. Potential corresponding uh, one plus one minus lambda b two is soft. So the Hamiltonian, which is one minus that is square summed over r, right? Plus this v external summed over r lambda, all that plus v e e expectation value with respect to this side. Minimum, right? Now you want the Hamiltonian in this form. So what do you do? You split this into minus one half lambda summed over i li square minus half. 1 minus lambda summed over i l i square. Right? Same thing you do with this. So this is lambda v e e plus 1 minus lambda v e e. Right? So this Hamiltonian therefore becomes lambda h with v external 1 plus 1 minus lambda h we have to do right and you're taking with respect to a wave function you're taking with respect to a wave function which is wave function corresponding to that right so this one is equal to this but this has to be less than e v external <coughs> one because this looks greater than psi is not wave function corresponding to this. So this value has to be greater than the external one plus one minus lambda e. That's it. So this fellow. As simple as that. Right now, I can use it. Suppose I take a hydrogen molecule and helium. You can do it with anything else, but this is the simplest. Okay? Hydrogen molecule has this potential. 
external potential, right? And helium has its potential. So, what I'm going to say is a lambda to be one half. Oh, let me see this one second. Not the external, the external, but the one half. Yeah. So, if I take E to be One half hydrogen R one. One second. Plus one half the helium R two. That's going to be hydrogen molecule. Okay. Helium is two by R, so that's one by R. Place somewhere. Plus the other one. This is necessarily greater than one half E helium plus one half E helium. Right? This is E H2 greater than one half. One half. <coughs> You can check the numbers. So I can use it right away. You can do it by NSC any diatomic, any diatomic. A diatomic. Okay, so that's the usefulness. Now, why I did this is I'm going to use it somewhere else. Now, we have defined universal functional. Now, you see what we want is what we want. So this is. Potentially, if you like it like this, in a way, in a schematic way, pull it out. You want to minimize the energy with respect to that row, so you want to define an F row, you should have a convex property, concave property. And that's desirable energy. So you define F row as maximum. And you're maximizing, maximizing with respect to some V, R, V external, R, E, V external, minus integrate V external, and this row is fixed. So what you do, given a density, you choose a particular V, some V external. Solve Schrodinger equation, get E, calculate that point. Choose another V external. They keep searching over V external. All right? And when you hit the maximum, that is uniquely defined row. Given a row, I can find V F directly. Okay? The, the two are the same. And this. You can show very easily as a desirable property that F lambda rho 1 plus 1 minus lambda rho 2 is less than lambda F rho 1 plus 1 minus lambda F rho 1. Both these can be implemented on a computer. Okay? And then you can map. So this becomes very important for fundamental space. Is that okay? So this this I wanted to do that. So let's see. I'm, I'm done. This this means no strange search. Derivative. Okay. And this I want to the time portion will be partly done. Short coming set. Okay. Okay. Now, now I can use these to define what a cone sham system is, and I'll prove to you that TC has to be the result. So, 
So now, suppose I'm looking for a non-interacting system, bone trap system, right? That gives me the same density. So let's go to constraint search. Suppose I'm looking for a looking for a non-interacting system giving density O R. And I want to do constraint search. What would I do? What is the operator for non-interacting system corresponding to F? Earlier we had, remember the interacting system we had F rho <laughs> equals psi E plus V E psi, right? <coughs> what would it be for non interacting system? Huh? V should be zero. V should be zero. So I should have. T. Only T is relative, right? So T non interacting rho is equal to minimum. And what is the wave function for non interacting system? <coughs> Slater determinant. <coughs> so this would be. Minimum of you search over a set of orbital so non systems this summation i y i minus half the square i that will be the non interacting arrangement for a given density right this here we go Is that okay? So this is minimum. That means the non-interacting kinetic energy for a given density, density is the same. The non-interacting kinetic energy for a given density is minimum of kinetic energy operator, right? Okay. And How do I find the true wave function? True wave function is minimum of psi giving rho psi t plus v t e. Right? Here for the same density, I'm minimizing the kinetic energy itself. Here I'm minimizing this t plus v t e. And this implies that psi t psi, that is the expectation value of the kinetic energy with respect to psi would necessarily be greater than because for the same density that is minimizing e plus v e e which will be greater, so t itself would be greater than t e of s this implies t minus t s right that exchange correlation energy n EFT is slightly less negative than one of them. Can I use this to define a bone sham system? The answer is yes. Suppose I put a constraint <coughs> that I minimize this and I want to put this constraint that whatever wave functions are given the same density, right? So we can do that. So given The density rho zero r some exact density by some method. Suppose I've been for a small system, I've done exact calculation somehow or the other, or variationally fantastic calculation. How do I get the phone sham system? So what do I do? I'm supposed to minimize summation y i p e operator y i minimize with respect to phi i 
right? With the constraint that rho gave me that density. So I'll put a, a line multiplier. And I put it plus or minus, doesn't matter. Put a Lagrange multiplier and put a condition that this be zero. So one of the ways to do it is rho r minus rho zero r. Rho r prime minus rho zero r prime divided by r minus r prime dr prime, and then the condition that e be orthonormal. Now that Coulomb interaction between Two density terms or density different terms. Very nice because if this fellow goes to zero, this whole thing goes to zero, and the other way, this is zero, then you can show that the density is. So it's unique. This is a, it does a very nice. Way. I have actually set up an equation. Yes. Can you repeat this term? The lamb multiplication over the lamb. Huh? The constraint term. Constraint term. What is the constraint? Constraint is that rho r equals rho zero or rho r minus rho zero r is equal to zero. No, 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 no. I'm given a density of interacting system. I want to find the cone champ system. Cone champ system is that that minimizes this. Although I want to minimize this, but there's a constraint that the density that these orbitals give rise to the density is that this orbitals give rise to satisfy this. Right? So I put a constraint so that when this is zero, this whole thing is zero. Right? So the equation it sets up is integration over here, dr and dr both. Both, yes. Thank you. Equation it sets up again standard variational thing. So first term will be L square phi i. On minimizing this to phi i star and <coughs> minus lambda integral mod phi i r prime square summed over i minus the given density divided by r minus r prime is equal to epsilon prime phi i. That's set up an equation. This part is the bond shaft of interest. But in the limit, I'll tell you what. I know some parts of the cone champ potential exactly. For example, I could have written it like this. So that part is known. So computer will be less strained if I want to do it like this, right? One part is known. Why should I be able to put it? Why should I be producing that three H one R which anyway in this case? Now there's a problem. So this part then will give me V hard tree. Plus free exchange coordination. You can do one more thing. You can further write this as one half L square plus V external R. You also know another form of this plus integration rho R prime over R minus R prime. That part is also known Hartree part plus or minus lambda integration rho R or the phi I square. And I'm taking away the forms that I know. This has to be some, done self consistently. Now, there's a problem. Problem is that when the constraint is satisfies, this guy goes to zero. Right? So, what you do is, and if you want this to be finite structured function, lambda should go to infinity. 
right? So, in the limit of lambda tending to infinity, this lambda integration lambda is bx. What I'm doing is I'm doing a penalty method. I impose the penalty that if they are not equal, there's a penalty. This is a standard penalty. All right, this is known as Zawar scheme. Zaw Morrison policy. And its variants also exist. Solid state systems, one has created uh, from Monte Carlo density, there was a paper recently in, in archives taking Monte Carlo density for a solid state system, they created Mount Sham. And Something. There was a paper a few years ago in general of uh, yes. matter. Yes. You yes. have a bad habit of stopping somebody with human parts. Our chain gets broken. I was really in understanding writing down the equation and just holding it into the part after the data. This is this. This is delta over delta pi i star of this whole thing. This is just like Hartley Clock. Minimization means variation. Okay, so this is another area of research which is quite hard. Somehow, let us learn about exact change correlation potentials of systems, different systems. How do they behave? Okay. Then after doing the derivation over the psi of the part, the pi yeah. star of pi, yeah. I have the equation, yeah. and then you fill the lambda of pi, you don't get the point. So I'll, yeah, so I'll do this calculation in the limit of lambda 10 to 20. I'll take very large lambda, maybe 1,000, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000. Because that's what mathematics tells you. Mathematics tells me that is uh, one short answer is that's how penalty method works. But uh, if you look at when the constraint is to be satisfied well, the term phi is square minus one naught r should tend to zero. That tends to zero, but your potential remains finite. What should lambda go to? So you can do calculation only in the limit of lambda equals to infinity. Otherwise, you will not even be able to satisfy the constraint. So what you do, following the mathematical prescription of penalty method, you start with small lambda, lambda may be 50, feedback lambda equal to 100. Keep in green. So you make a series, a sequence. And that sequence converges to the exact one. Okay, so there's a lot of mathematics going on. So this and its variants, right? There's a very good group in uh, what is this? Adopters. So they, they created for with the Hartley Fock density, they did it for solids. Recently, as I said, those with Monte Carlo density, they again created this for solids. So it's another hot area because now. Computational power is available. People want to earlier would not say there's no calculation, it was a calculation aid. Now you can develop in science. Okay, so that's <coughs> that. Then there are other very you know various different methods you can develop. And you can now <coughs> this was Jean Morrison Pollard. <coughs> exactly the same way you can do using Niels method. So you say that f rho is equal to a maximum of e yes external minus integration <coughs> e external given rho r r for cone chan system this is ts rho defined as maximum of E non interacting V external minus integration. V external, so this will become V cone shaft. So, uh, you can say that V cone shaft, so this is equal to 
V external, which is fixed, plus V hardy, which will evaporate for a given density, okay, plus the exchange modulus. So the only thing we need to vary is this. Given a density, you can evaluate these two. This is fixed. And you say I'll vary this until I hit a maximum of this. Right? When you hit a maximum, you get the exact measure. This also can be put on a computer. You can write algorithms. Right? And then you can do it in many, many times. This, this is as far as the exact part. There's one more exact part, and then I'll come to it. Okay, so this is another thing. Now, for example, a very interesting and very important problem that has now started, particularly when one is going to small size systems. Now, you know, one, one, one molecular transistors and things like those. So, suppose I have a chain of atoms, right? Long chain. So, I just take two atoms. How does the exact potential look here, and how does it change whether the charge transfer takes place? We can do that. The good thing is, as I said, that's why I kept insisting on you that why don't you plot PXR or prime? Moonshine potential is local potential. You plot it and when it jumps around, you actually see what's happening. Okay? So this is an area you, some of you may want to pursue. All right? Thank you. There's a lot of insights to be gained, and I'll comment on this a little more later. So we know now. How to generate exact cone sham potential? So let me think what all I'm doing. This is where we have done. General exact cone sham system for the density. Uh, results in short form. Now, what I want to do is I want to take the exact Of All right. So I want to do the practical implementation. So as I said, this is my equation: minus one half delta square v external plus v hard t. So let me write this v hard t as summation pi i r prime mod square over r minus r prime v r prime. Plus this has to be solved itself consistently because the potential itself depends on pi i, right? Except that I don't know this. As to And this is where the local density approximation and all that comes. So very first, very first calculation. And this was local density approximation. So as I said, this is basically does everything according to assuming that I can write exchange correlation energy as integration epsilon xc rho r rho r dr where epsilon xc rho r is the exchange correlation energy per electron in energy. <coughs> so you take the expression for the homogeneous electron gas, except that now you start putting a row up. I've already derived that exchange 
energy LDA was minus 3 fourths, 3 pi square raised to 1 third, integration rho raised to 4 thirds R dr. So Vx LDA is delta Ex over delta rho R comes out to be minus Kf R over pi, which is minus 3 pi square rho R raised to one third over five. Okay, it's as simple as that. You substitute that in this equation, you get the answer. So simple. Know that complicated non-local potential and all that local potential. Similarly, one form, the Wigner form, one of the many, ECLDA, I wrote as integral A over you know RS. Depends on rho plus b, rho r, here, and then there's a corresponding dc. All in terms of the density. Put that in, calculate the density, calculate this potential again, start all over. Any questions on this? But remember, this is an approximation. It's not an exact calculation, but for 20, 30 years, this proof could be a very good approximation because now suddenly people found a tool through which they could do calculations on very large systems. They one could not do Hartley Fock, not to mm -hmm. you know, go beyond Hartley Fock, no one could do that. They suddenly opened the doors. And the answers are pretty okay. Any questions? Okay, now let's see. So we're doing calculations, numbers. I mean, I've given all over. I don't remember them offhand, but give you some general idea. So those of you who are doing calculations, who are doing research, they already know how to do these calculations. Come to the command, but let's find some shortcomings. Number one, I had said that Vxc exact goes as minus 1 over r for r tending to infinity. Right? Let's see what does Vxc LDA does. It's just going as rho raised to one third. In a bound system, how does the Density go and limit R to infinity. What does it decay? Exponentially. So this will go like e raised to minus a r. So you see, whereas the real potential would go something like this, right? Or exchange correlation, far away. <coughs> the, the LDA is decays exponentially. If the potential is decaying exponentially, it is less negative than exact, right? What will happen to the highest occupied eigenvalue? Would it be more? Would it be less magnitude? Would it be less bound? Would it be more bound? Hmm? Potential is shallow. Would it be less bound or more bound? Only two possibilities. Huh? More bound. Right? Is that right? So, is the strength of this potential more or the strength of this potential more? Finding the strength. Hmm? Which has more binding strength? Huh? Which one? LD has more binding. So, if I have a potential that's going on D. Is like this, and another potential is the same depth and like this. Which one is more binding? Hmm? 
square means more binding, it is less binding. Potential depends, the length depends on B, A square, B A. Larger the range, on the same principle, this will give you less kinetic energy. Same depth but more binding. So this is less binding. So E max LDA magnitude is much less than I, which is the, which should be the true E max for KS. In fact, it comes out to be about 50% off. That is only a small part of the energy. Overall energy comes out to be okay. Is that okay? <laughs> so that's one problem. LDA has. Nonetheless, there was nothing more, <coughs> nothing else to be done, so this had to be solved. Now, <coughs> if I think in terms of density, Vxc is V Hartree, you know, V cone sham, V Hartree plus Vxc. Right now, in a single electron system, <coughs> in a single electron system, you have V external only, right? Whereas, if you go this is just by formula, V external. Plus V hard T, I can calculate V hard T for a single electron. So there's a density and we exchange correlation. So this should add up to zero. Right? For a single electron. Self interaction should not be there. If it is not zero, that means there's a self interaction. Right? Now it so happens that in LDA, integration rho R prime over R minus R prime, B R prime, minus, now the scale R over pi, not equal to 0. They're not expected to be 0. Why should it be 0? It's an approximation. This in fact comes out to be 0. So in LDA, in a way, if I make local density approximation, an electron is interacting with itself. If it is interacting with itself, it will repel itself. If it repels itself, it will have bound. The two are related. Is that okay? Ideally so. There is a this is one of the very highly cited papers. So if you want to go beyond LDA, one thing you can do is make self-interaction selection. Interacted, interaction, corrected, <coughs> LDA. Okay. So if I know that for each orbital, I should have EXC i i mod square plus integration i i r prime square no, let's write the potential sorry i should have v x c calculated for this i f orbital density plus integration Rho R prime over R minus R prime, D R prime, rho I should be zero. If it's not zero, you from outside you correct it, subtract it out. Okay, so this is known as LDA sink. And there's this most favorite where you just write what do you don't know? Maybe 1982, if I'm not mistaken. 
Okay. One of the very highly desired papers as the first one to correct NDA using this idea. I'm sure you know the whatever program was that's why you're running also has this. So this is where it comes from. Actually, forcefully, the only thing that happens when you do this self correction, correction you make correction for each orbital. So potential again becomes orbital dependent. Different for self correction correction is different for each. So what you do is take the LDA potential, VXC LDA, plus add V sig. That depends on I. Although it is still multiplicative, but it's like hardly there. Okay. That's self projection directly. That corrects a lot of things. Now, in this case, you will also find if I have a solid, since both eigenvalues are off, you expect band gaps to be roughly 50% small. That's what you find. E.g., roughly 50% of two ones. Because this is anyway 50% off. Now, in an extended system, you don't expect much to change if I add one more electron. So, even for n plus 1 system, this will be 50% off. This one's off. But there's a bigger reason. The exact exchange function potential also shows jumps. All right? That I'll come to in a minute. But so these are two shortcomings. Then, how the numbers come and all that. And these are the two major shortcomings of LDA. And obviously, it's an approximation. The next level you do is something called <coughs> the which you wouldn't know about because now everybody does for GGA, right? So there's a step between LDA and GGA or GEA. So something called the GEA. And this was initially given only on basis of dimension analysis. Gradient expansion approximation. So what they said, there is this LDA that depends only on rho, but there could be a correction. This correction Proportional to grad of rho square. Why square? Because it cannot depend on the direction. Right? So, on basis of dimension analysis, EGGA was proposed. GEA was proposed. It comes out to be E LDA plus integration. I think this is rho is square divided by rho raised to let's see. One third or four thirds, somehow, right? One third or four thirds. Let me just type it. There's some C, DEA coefficient. Okay, this gave very nice energies. This is a PRL. Norman. And at the Orton Gold. The 19. Maybe six, eight, seven, or something about number of All right. So this the problem is that if you calculate the potential in this, it blows up far away. So what they said, they put a correction term. So there's a bigger problem. I see for when I wrote the exchange, I had written it as rho x c, rho x r r prime, rho r over r minus r prime, dr dr prime. One half, right? So for every function, there will be a hole. And it so happened that the hole had the property rho x in particular was greater than or zero at all time, and rho x integral was one. You plot the hole corresponding to GEA, it does this. Also, so there's a problem with you. And that gave us to first G, G, A, generalized gradient. What they did, they said, number one, let's see how the science goes. Since 
Rho x is greater than or equal to 0, let's chop these off. Ask the computer to do it. Make a hole and then remove this. Then you say these are undamped oscillations. Let's chop it off somewhere so that rho x r r prime b r prime is equal to 1. So the hole that remains is this. Something like that, right? And then you have rid of right? Okay? This was the first GGA. Gradient approximation for generalized. <coughs> and this was done by John Perdue. After that, he has been developing whatever you know you I don't know whether you know latest was scan functional in right, 2015. He tries to impose more and more and more exact conditions on the function. Scan satisfies 17 exact functions proper Okay? And then you make better that's why knowing the exact answers in some limit is important. Whatever you do approximately, if it satisfies those conditions, you may have it approximately. Just like when you <coughs> do a ASP principle, you make a wave function consistent with boundary conditions and all that, you make a better function, you know, better wave function. So this was the first GG. Another one <coughs> which became very popular among the <coughs> chemistry community. <coughs> was another GGA. The spirit being the same that, that <coughs> was Becky functional. What you did, you made a correction. The potential made a guessed correction so that epsilon x goes as minus 1 over 2r as r to the infinity. So you have these logarithmic, sine, hyperbolic functions, and all that. Now we fitted that, and that became also. But the idea was the same. Satisfy an exact property. Okay? This is a whole business. If some of you have made this, it's very nice. The nice stuff is that someone does is in this business. He creates functions. Okay? That's the other. So this is what I've covered up through LDA, going beyond LDA. I've done SIC, I've done GGA, and then you know after that, this was further improved, then you got EPBE. Similar things were done in correlation, which is a very tougher problem. Okay, actually you can see, if, uh, you know, the mathematically, the expressions in correlation are more messy. Okay, that's where the LDA and calculations stop, and this generally gives you an idea. So. In VAS, when you're typing something, you know that's what is happening. Yeah, I'll just take a five minute break and then come to the last topic, the exact topic. Electron uh, the, the energy for fractional number. And then it's fractional. Yeah. Yeah. Have we done the exact 
See, the thing is, that that's what I was saying. Uh, once you get the cone sham potential, it gives you a, it gives you a visual way of looking at things. And then you can also make a better guess, better understanding of when you extend this to a larger system where you cannot do an exact calculation, but then you know exactly what should be happening. This small body system is teaching. So that is where you want to look as to what you can, if you have exact and see what all can you extract from it. It's not just the potential, it's what else can you do. I talk about step structure, that's very important. That means very, very important. When you have these small systems where charge transfer is in place, all the things that charge transfer is very important. So, yes. I think the density Exactly that we don't use. Extracting the example of wave function is very easy. <coughs> very well. How do you extract out of the density is not good. So you are saying that if you have solved the ground state, density of solved, then you can make it in the wave function. Yes. The wave function you have probably solved, we can make a phone jam system. What are you learning about the phone jam system? If I am not about the phone jam system, how does it compare with these like, uh, approximate calculations? And if I want to write some properties, how do I do that? Right, for example, a big thing in, so it has been, now suppose I want to write phone on Do an LDA calculation. <coughs> now you disturb the atoms from their position, but the snake constant. You can do it in LDA. That's right. Some of them have one thing you see the common one? I No, 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 but one doesn't know, one cannot assess approximation, but one compare it to exact third of the These are all possibilities depending on the problem you solve. You know? And it does make visualization easier and at times more accurate. How much work people have done on this? Now actually, so initially it was all energy, 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 density, energy, and all that. As the computer power increased, as DFT became more and more accessible to people, and now exploring a lot of problems. The one part I have not touched upon in this is the DFT, time dependent, which has become a standard tool for calculation. Now, in solids, also in band gap, they were trying to do this. How to, you know, bootstrap certain things. Try to solve that is how to do the how to bootstrap from the here and all that. So, depending on what problem you're solving, you can. But if one required is how to formulate it in terms of density. Yeah. Because all the prescription wave functions are well known. The FE1 doesn't know. So, that is the explanation. Once you find that, is it as good or does it give you any advantage over wave function? You may find a method of doing DFT calculation, but if you're going beyond the energy calculation, it may turn out to be much more horrendous than the and what is going to be. Those are the challenges. 
So when you compare exact in this, if you want to work in fundamentals, that's, that's the challenge. How do you extract things out? How do you use them? How do you make sure that they're put in the paper? So it's like this still challenging the function. You just use the MBA or any other. Yeah, so function would not be good because as it is the values of shell, some values of shell. As what I do now, I also show you that even in exact calculation is a problem. So how do you make that correction? You have done GW and things like those. I try to make that correction, but then that becomes a problem. Can I, within the FTA link, can I somehow find that correction? Yeah. That's why people like Malaysia are very useful. They do GW and then you compare. Yeah, ideally, someone has taken the ground state density and wants to calculate the exact state. Then I don't know how. Yeah, so what all they were saying in Konsham is that I said, mean, take the upper virtual log. They have no meaning. The extended system, they may have a meaning, but you don't change things much. Then one can show exactly the I'm going to show that there's a discrepancy. Okay, suppose I want to do exactly, I did some work on you know, how to make exactly straight functionals. Right, so we, we tried that. To some extent, it works pretty okay. So, those are the challenges. Yeah, I mean, I think we have a radio section. Six state because when you are going to your density itself is going to be yeah, so you're, it's not just wrong, it's not just the reservation taking ground state density and trying to say that from this either you know how to map ground state density to excited state that one doesn't know, or you make functionals which are specifically tailored to excited states, and then you'll be doing all right. All the yes. basis and the coefficient would be probably the same. I'm just the derivation is off. Okay, so now I'm going to do another esoteric Oh, yeah. Okay. So now what we're going to say is, uh, motivate this. Okay, why even am I talking about this? The question is this. We have defined a function of called energy function, which is a universal function, plus integration, v external r uh, rho r theta. Right? We defined a density function. Now, so I suppose I could write a function. I've written a function, you know, some, some, let's say. Just, just for the heck of it, let's just write e rho. The sum function of rho integration. E. Okay? Now, that's one thing. Another thing is, we also define a mu, which is de dn. And we have said this is minus i for delta n equals minus 1 and plus or minus a for delta n plus 1, right? But that was a finite difference formula. We took delta n to be equal to plus or minus 1. But on the other hand, I'm writing it here as a fraction, uh, as a partial derivative. This is at v external fixed. 
can I? I mean, do that. This is fine. This is a finite difference. But can I really take this definition? This, 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 this derivative, right? What if I put now this, this, this as far as this functional is concerned, this blind to what density you put here. Suppose I put a density which is density corresponding to n plus some fractional number of electrons. What answer do I get? Is the motivation clear? One, I want to define new property. Number two, I want to know what answer do I get if I put that. that. And two are related because if I can do this, then I can do this. So how do I do that? Okay, this is another very famous paper, and then it really opened the I think it also explained why semiconductor magnets don't come out to be all right. This is where do you uh, be in the bodies? The Not sure, but that's what it is. 1982, maybe. Around that, 83. Okay, now how do I define fractional number quantum mechanics? Quantum mechanics, the fractional number is given by the statistical mixture. Of n, n plus 1 and so on these networks, right? You cannot just say that I'm solving Schrodinger's equation for, you know, 5.3 networks. It has to be something there. You know, a stressful mixture of 5, 6, 7, and so on. So what you're doing is you define a density matrix, right? And the energy, so wave function, not wave function, define a density matrix, right? Which is a mixture of is a probability so that summation pi is equal to one, summation i pi is equal to that n plus n, right? Then you get the expectation value. Obviously, the energy, <coughs> then if you do it through density matrix approach, or n plus f, comes out to be summation pi e i. Right? Density rho n plus f r comes out to be summation pi rho i. R and so on, right? So we have to now translate that into this. Is that okay? Now I'll do it in purely PFT terms. So what am I doing? I want the minimum of E n plus f equals summation pi e i, right, with the constraint that summation pi is equal to 1 and constraints and summation i pi e equals n plus f. Agreed? These EIs are fixed for a ground state. 
So what you want is that delta E n plus f, when I vary these pi's, should be such should be zero, right? Where I have summation delta pi is zero, right? And so is this. So your data BIs have to be consistent. Since I have these two conditions, I want to give you proof which I have uh, writing this is very pedagogical. Since there are two conditions, right? So not so from here I cannot write the i equals zero because delta pi is not arbitrary. All bi is not arbitrary, they have to satisfy two constraints. So only suppose there are n pi's, right? N minus two. N is you know, some two constraints imply that there are odd but two. Pi is there are two constraints, so there's no constraint make not all of them are. I fix the rest to you know these, these two fixed. Okay. So let us say <coughs> let us say I have Are fixed, fixed m i equals m and i equals l are no are, are, are given in terms for this. Those will be arbitrary. All but two, these two will be fixed once I fix the other, all those two constraints. Right? So that's, and that's, that's just for the hype of it. One of them has to be larger, the states. Okay? And what do I have? I have summation delta pi, i not equal to m, not equal to l, plus delta pi l, plus delta pi m is equal to zero. And I have summation i not equal to m, not equal to l, i delta pi i plus l delta pi l plus m delta pi m. Right? Now, why am I doing all this nonsense? Is because you see, this is a linear problem. There's a quadratic, I would have just done that. You cannot take a derivative. The minimum actually exists at the end points for the end. And in pi, by the way, I have to say here, pi's are between 0 and 1. So actually, there's no quadratic dependence of pi. Things depend only on the end points. Minimum or maximum are at the end points in the linear form. I have to do all this. <coughs> but I'm, I'm looking for some other number, right? I'm not the end points. So, from here, you can solve for, I've developed this proof, so I'm going to proud of it. So, I just want to show it to you. <coughs> Multiply by L and subtract. We get L, summation delta pi, right? L minus I delta pi sum over I right I'm multiplying by L and subtracting plus is equal to M minus L delta pi 
I multiply by m and subtract, I get m minus i dot di is equal to l minus m delta p f. So I know delta p and delta p in terms of other p lines, right? So let's write the energy. And lastly, why can't understand? What? You are multiplying the first equation with L and subtracting from the second. I mean, this will be L minus M, so on the right hand side, I get L minus I. L minus I delta PI, this will cancel, I get L minus M. Okay, so I get delta E equals, so from this, I get. Delta Pm is equal to 1 over M minus L, all that. Delta Pl is equal to 1 over <coughs> minus 1 over M minus L. Summation this will be L minus I. <coughs> this is M minus L. <coughs> right? So now let's write. Delta E I, uh, delta E is going to be equal to summation I, not equal to L, not equal to that. So, not equal to M, not equal to L. Okay. Delta P I, P I, plus P M, L, and all that I'll write. So, I can write plus E M. Summation L minus I delta P I over M minus L minus E L over M minus L summation I minus I. Yeah. Right? And this summation is also now these could be average. I equals not equals M not equals L. I not equals L. So I can write this as Summation I, E I plus L minus I over M minus L minus M minus I over M minus L. That's for some E M, right? E M, E L, delta P I. Clear? Right? Yeah. Right? Now all these delta PIs are arbitrary, right? Because I have taken I, which is not equal to M, it's not equal. Agreed? Yes, everyone with me? Okay. Now you see, since they are all arbitrary, I should have this term zero, right? So if I have this term 0, I have this problem. Ei is equal to m minus i over m minus l el minus l minus i over m minus l em. If delta pi equals roll up. Right? Can I tell the system have your energy relation like this? And the m particles is there a relationship that says that number of if energy for l particles is el number of energy for m particles em then the number for i would be this there's <coughs> none right so this cannot be right so this condition is not to be satisfied and this implies all delta pi should Is it? Hear me? Very logical. But if all delta pi is are zero, I would have these questions. If all delta pi are zero, 
and but they have arbitrary variation. This logically implies pi is either one or zero. Because if they are somewhere in between zero and one, I can vary them in sign and direction both. They have to be zero, they have to be at the end, that cannot be arbitrary. Then any arbitrary situation has to be zero. Right? Now this is also out. The summation pi is out. All i is one. So I cannot have all of them on zero. So all pi is zero. I, I not equal to M, not equal to L, but also only PM and PL are non zero. They have only two coefficients are non zero. So if you want to have N plus of electrons, I should have only two. Next, that's one thing. So that's one thing. And the other thing is M and L have to be adjacent. That means M equals L plus one. That too might lead to you again following step similar line. What you do is they are not adjacent. Then you can find an energy for number in between, an integer number in between, which should be a mixture of these two. But that cannot happen. Nobody dictates that. So if you are adjacent, then there's no integer in between. That, that means, so this comes out to be if I have n plus one is that like electrons, I should have E equals n minus f. En plus F e. Only two modes. You can mix only two states. Okay, and that immediately gives you P E D N equals P E D F, which is En plus one minus En, which is minus F. If you have between n minus one and n plus two, uh, n minus one and n minus one plus f, then you'll mix n minus one and n, and that give you minus a. Okay, that's the whole thing. But this has repercussions. So E versus n would look like this. Oh, then you also want arbitrary variations delta e to be greater than zero and this basically tells you this comes out to be zero because e satisfies something very nice e satisfies this relationship e plus two o e n plus one minus two e n plus e n minus one is always greater than zero this basically is telling you that i minus a or in the system is the next one. So this this is really a minimum. All right, this is like so E goes like this. There is n minus one. There is n. There is n plus one. And there are these straight lines they meet here. E n minus one, E n, E n minus one. So these are line segments which are discontinuous at the ends. All right, and mu is minus a, minus r minus a. So delta mu, mu jumps discontinuously at integer 
one word. Okay. Now what is mu? Mu is delta T S by delta rho plus V external plus V R3 plus V exchange correlation. Right? Now I'll make a statement and I'll let you think about it. T S rho, the liberty would change if you go from one orbital to the other. The, the function derivative of T S rho would change discontinuously only if you go from one orbital to the other. Otherwise, the same orbital cannot change. Now imagine this. Let's take a simple example. Suppose I have a hydrogen atom. Okay, it has one electron. And I go to having 1 plus 10 raised to minus 20 electrons or minus whatever number, you know, minus 100. Slight increase. What would happen? The mu was minus 13.6 as soon as you cross one you'll jump to minus or whatever the affinity is i think 0 0.075 okay now look at this is mu orbital hasn't changed the external hasn't changed can this change with such small density? What should jump? V exchange correlation jumps. So if you had a V exchange correlation which was like this, at 10 days to minus 23, it will jump like that. Okay? The difference <coughs> would be something like this. It jumps, but far away it goes to zero. So V exchange correlation has this funny property, jumps by constant across integer. And this explains why band gaps cannot be correct. For example, if I have <coughs> a this is conduction band, this is a balance band, a conduction band. If I add this is 10 days to raise electrons, if I add one electron here. Exactly the same thing. They hardly change. Only these could change for the non interacting system. That would be a DLI. <coughs> yeah. There is a difference between the two orbitals. This thing can jump. So actually, go to one more electron. This whole system will become like this. <coughs> when you do your calculations, you do a single calculation. We call this E gap. The true gap is this. It differs by this jump. So you'll always underestimate band gap. Why? Yeah, that's it. So I showed you the VSC jumps. In 10 days to 23, if I put one particle, that is like adding 10 days to minus 23 particles. One in 10, 10 days to 10 days to more. Then it's 23 in 1. Exchange power separation has jumped. So this whole thing will shift up. This whole thing shifts up. What you did in your calculation was measure this gap. Actual gap is this. Right? This was minus A. Minus I, but this is not minus A. This is minus A. And what defines the gap like this? Okay, so you always understood. And now I let you think in terms of since this is even if you add this, this whole thing remains a one particle system, a one orbital system. 
invert the one orbital system, get the exchange cost information, and see what y should jump. This is also related to VSC going to zero at infinity, but nothing has stopped yet. Just how much bad is this? Problem is that now this is a one one orbital system, right? So I can write for one orbital. I can always write the potential we exchange correlation potential so density is this row 1 plus small f row 2 right so this is one orbital system so orbital one sham orbital is going to be square root of row 1 plus f row 2 for one orbital i can always write the v exchange correlation as one half del square phi over phi plus whatever v hat and all that right now use that density as r tends to infinity goes as e raised to minus the square root of minus 2y r where i is the ionization potential for one plus this when you add the other one the i will become a and assuming that vxc goes to zero as r tends to infinity show that the two potentials will from this guy will show that they jump so write to me an email and i'll define it properly there are nothing yeah okay so all the lecture notes uh, i mean the video will be shared. You see, he has already uploaded some.